triple header. One day, Gordon was resting in a shed. It was a very hot day, and the express was getting heavier by the minute. Ah, oh, I suffer dreadfully. No one really cares. My crew says I feel better after a rest and refueling, but... Hey there, fat face! You should tell the fat controller to get you tanks and a bunker. You'll feel a different sort of engine. Us common shunters never get out of breath, you know. <laughs> Maybe it was lucky for Thomas he left, because Gordon hadn't the energy to apply at all. The men worked hard on Gordon, but to no avail. Hmm. Your boiler tubes are furred up. You'll have to go to Croven's Gate to have them fixed, old boy. While Gordon was away, Henry pulled the express for the time being. He kept the time and almost beat Gordon's record. But one day, just before Gordon's return, Henry fell ill too. The inspector went back to the fat controller's office to tell him the situation. And that's basically the situation, sir. No other spare engines except Thomas, and I don't think he could manage the train on his own. Hmm, this is a predicament. What about Percy? Can he help? Those two with Duck might manage. After all, it's only as far as Croven's Gate, and I know they have a spare engine there that could take the train the rest of the way. The three tank engines arrived the next day to collect the express. Thomas coupled first, nearest the train, Duck coupled second, and Percy headed the train. As soon as the guard's whistle blew, the three slowly but surely pulled the heavy train out of the station. Come on, come on! We're doing it! We're doing it! Pull harder, you two! We must get these people to their station! The last coach of the train was drawing out of the platform, and the cavalcade was out in the open line. The trio couldn't go nearly as fast as Gordon, but the passengers didn't mind one bit. They knew Duck, Thomas and Percy were trying their best. Now, express trains are not like fast trains. Expresses only stop at big stations along the main line, while with branch line trains, an engine gets a chance to have a small rest before continuing. Soon they began to feel tired as they struggled up Gordon's Hill, and the strain of the coaches was beginning to tell. However, when they reached the top, the hill proved too much for little Percy, and the driver blew his whistle, signalling to the others to stop the train at the bottom. We cannot take you off here, but do the best you can to keep your brakes off. We've come too far to give up now. It's not too long. However, in doing this, Thomas and the Duck would have an even tougher time, but they charged on, twin columns of steam shooting high in the air. We're nearly... there. We're nearly there! Poor Percy had the steam to summon another word. Crone's Gate came into view, and they were crossing over to another track, when Duck found he couldn't go any further. Thomas couldn't board the train on his own if he wanted to, and, with one last effort, the cavalcade stopped right at the signal box. And he was to stand and watch the whole thing, but Gordon.
I have been on the train, and I must say, I am proud of you all for getting as far as you did. As a reward, not only do you get a well-deserved rest and refueling, but a new coat of paint for each of you. Thomas, Duck, and Percy were relieved as they were being uncovered and moved onto another siding. The relief engine came along. They coupled him up to the train and took it onwards to the mainland. As the trio moved tirely to a siding, Gordon looked over to Thomas and smiled, and gave three deep breaths. Neither needed to say anything. Thomas knew exactly what he meant.